What's going on, Sumolings? Thanks for joining us for another product walkthrough webinar. Today, we are joined by the team over at IFSO. IFSO is a WordPress plugin that allows you to display dynamic content to users based on their search terms, language, geolocation, and more. It is available in our store right now, starting at just $49. And before we dive into this walkthrough, I just wanna tell you a few quick things. Uh, the first is that we would love to hear about you, your business, your use case over in the chat room. Um, the second thing is if you have any questions about the tool, about the deal, how to get set up, anything like that, you can leave those questions in the Q&A box down below the video. We will circle back to those questions after the walkthrough, um, but we do have some team members over at If So that uh, may get to your questions before that. And the third thing is that there will be a replay available of this. Uh, it will be sent out to you and available on YouTube. So uh, if you need to step out, you can. All right, uh, so we are joined by the CEO and founder of IFSO, Hosef. How are you doing today? I'm good, thank you. Welcome everybody. And thank you for your time and for being here. Uh, awesome. I won't be as fluent as uh, Lindsay, but uh, I'll do my best. Um, my English is, is not perfect, but uh, I will try to be as fluent as I can and to make it interesting for you. You sound like you're doing great. All right, I'm going to pass this over to you. Uh, I will check in with you for the Q&A. OK, great. Thanks again. And welcome again. Uh, I'm going to tell you about uh, if so. What we'll cover today is um, a short description, description about what is if so. I'll show some uh, use cases. And, and then I'll show you how to set a, a, a basic trigger, a basic unit in if so. Then some advanced options. And uh, uh, two more options, we call it a uh, group and dynamic keyword insertion. So what is IFSO? Uh, IFSO is a WordPress plugin, it's just for WordPress, and it allows you to add or replace content based on the uh, user profile or uh, interaction with the site. Um, one second. Yeah, so, the idea is so is that you don't need to change the whole website. You only need to choose a um, specific part of the uh, of the website, important parts like the titles or call to action, and to change them, uh, to tailor them to the user in order to uh, uh, to provide them with the best content that will um, uh, help you improve conversion rate, engagement, bounce rate, and sales. Um, so we, we, we work very hard to make IFSO uh, work on every website, on every WordPress website, with every page builder, and to allow you to change any content that you want on the website. It can be menu items, titles, images, and uh, of course, text. Uh, it's not an easy task, um, but uh, I, I, I think you can, I, I can say that you can change almost everything on any website. So, and even if you have a problem, you can always contact our support and uh, we'll probably find a solution for you. Okay, so some uh, use cases uh, before we go to the how-to. And I'll actually I'll show, you, I'll show you live examples on our website. Um, first example, you see now uh, uh, the IFSO website, ifso.com, and you can see the title here, the number one WordPress personalization plugin, try us. Now, let's say uh, people in, in, uh, in Google, Google Ads, when they uh, search for IFSO, they can search the term WordPress personalization plugin, and they can search for WordPress dynamic content plugin. So, the default version of our website, of our website title, is the number one WordPress personalization plugin. But if I add here a query string, if so equals dynamic, and I send users from Google Ads to this URL, it will show dynamic content WordPress plugin. And users will actually feel they found exactly what they were looking for. Another example, also on our website, we have this nice, nice uh, character here. 
that if you uh, hover over it, it left. And then we add a cookie to your browser. If I refresh the page now, because I have this cookie, the character will uh, hold the shield and will be ready for you. Another example is, um, you probably, most of you use UTMs. So you can notice this if you come from, uh, uh, I'll show it, I'll show it to you on the slideshow. Okay. Um, so search them, I already talked about it. Um, another example we have on our website is on our plants page. Usually when you visit our plants page, you'll see all the uh, plants we have. But if you signed up for our free time and then uh, you enter our website from uh, an email we send you that we're, we're telling you your free time is about to end, we added another query string here because if so for, and then the box here tells you, or you we, the call to action is not sign up for a free trial. So we changed the box here to how many websites do you want to make awesome? And then you need to pick a plan. A plan. I already showed you this one. Uh, actually, if you come from, uh, from AppSumo using this link, um, the ifso.com, um, question mark UTM campaign app sumo. We use it for uh, for tracking reason. So we see in uh, in our Google Analytics, we can see how many people arrived from from the app sumo page. But we also change the character to all the same. App sumo are the best. Browser language. It's a great um, a use case. A great condition. Everybody who has a, a, a website, a hotel, restaurant, a apps. Everybody that sells a global product can um, change the reviews, the part of the reviews or the recommendation and show them in the user's language. So if I'm Spanish, I will see a review in Spanish of someone from Spain. Okay, so... Um, I'm going to dive in now and show you how to set uh, if so. I can't see the question part. So Lindsay, if you hear me, I just need, oh, the Q&A here. Okay. I just want to Got make it. sure everything is okay. If, if there's any problem, please uh, tell me. No, you're doing great. Yeah. Okay. Great. So. Okay, so I already installed Ifso on this website, and uh, I'll, uh, I have uh, Ifso here on the side menu. And the first thing uh, I need to do is to create a trigger. A trigger is a basic unit of dynamic content in Ifso. Um, every trigger has at least one dynamic version. You can see it here, version A, and the default version. Now, the way Ifso works is that it checks the condition we have on the dynamic version, we have a condition. You can choose the condition, select the condition here and the content box. If so, we'll first check the condition of version A. If the condition is met, it will show the content of version A. If it's not, it will check the condition of the next version. In this case, we have only two versions, dynamic and the default. So if the condition is not met, the default content will be displayed. You can add as many versions as you want. You simply click here, add a new version, and now I have version A and version B. Remember, if so, we'll first check the condition of the, of the first content uh, uh, version. Um, so if you want to ch change the order in which if so checks the condition, you can simply drag version B to the top, and then the condition you set here will be checked first. Okay, so now let's see how we set the conditions. 
I'll show you an example of how to set a condition of a browser language. If the user's browser language is Spanish or German or whatever, uh, you can change a little bit uh, some of the content as I showed you before. So the uh, browser language condition is under user behavior. I'll uh, review all the condition afterwards. Uh, user behavior, I select browser language, and here I can select the languages. So let's pick Spanish, I'll start typing, and say, hola. If not, okay, let me delete version B. If the user's browser language is Spanish, I'll say, hola. If not, I will say, hey. When I finish, I press publish. And then I get a shortcut here. I simply uh, paste this shortcode anywhere on the website. I'll open a new page now, but uh, it can be on page, post, widget, and uh, even menu items, title, um, so basically anywhere on your website. Let's call it uh, test, and I'll test the trigger here. I hit publish, and view page. Okay, you can see the hola here at the bottom. That's because I have Spanish in my browser language. It's Hebrew, so, uh, but if I'll um, remove the Spanish now, and then I'll go back to the uh, to the page, I hit refresh, and then I see, hey, so this is the browser language condition. This is the way to set up a, a simple trigger. Let's go back to our trigger. Okay, so let me show you uh, some of the conditions. We'll just uh, I'll show you quickly. Um, we have a device condition, and you need to remember that Ipso is a server-side uh, solution. Uh, unlike uh, just the responsive uh, website that shows you content based on the screen size, Ipso will check the device type and then decide if to show the content or not. So we put this uh, condition here. Um, so you can use it even if, if you have a an element on your website that takes a long time to load and you don't want to load it on, on mobile, you can simply click the device and show it only on desktop. It's really convenient, though it's not one of our best uh, or most effective conditions, it's still uh, here. Under user behavior, we have uh, uh, the user, if the user is logged in, if he's a new visitor, if it's his first time, you can say, hello, welcome. And if he's a returning visitor, you can say, welcome back. You can also uh, make a sequence and say, welcome, welcome back. And on the on, on third time say, uh, it's good to have you uh, again. It's good to have you at the third time, whatever you want. Browser language, I already showed you. And uh, let me show you only the, the most effective condition because we have a lot, we have about uh, 14. Uh, so if you have a question about the specific condition, you can ask me uh, the Q&As and I will answer at the end. Uh, but one of the most effective conditions is under advertising platform, Google Ads. Uh, it really helps improve conversion rate. Uh, you can change only, only the title or only the, the, the image in, in your hero and you'll see a, a huge improvement in conversion rate and in engagement. Users will feel like they found exactly what they are looking for. For example, if a user uh, searches for your product name uh, plus price, you can tell him something about the price, show him a 20% discount, or tell him this is the most affordable price he will find. And if, you'll, if he searches for uh, your product name plus reviews, you can say you have a five-star review on one of the website or the people love your uh, love your product. Um, 
uh, the way to use the, the Google Ads condition is to select advertising platforms, Google Ads, and then you choose a query string, a query name. It can be whatever you want. Let's say price, just for example. And then if Ixo shows you what you need to add to your URL in order to show this content. I'll show you the example. Let's say price related um, title and default title. This is this is title. These are the two versions uh, I have now. I hit update. And uh, this is our page again. You can see the default title here. And here, if so, tells me what I need to add to the URL in order to show the dynamic title. So it's if so equals uh, question mark, if so equals uh, price. Let's add it to the URL. And you can see now that the, the in this case, the text, but the title was uh, was changed. Okay, if you want to use this condition on Google Ads, you have two options, either to add the all uh, string here is the tracking template field in Google Ads, or you can just add the question mark if so equals something uh, at the end of the final URL, you have it in your keyword level, ad, word, ad level, ad group level, campaign level, or even in the account level. So actually, this is uh, how it was started. Um, I worked as a digital marketer, and I had to change the telephone number in one of uh, our websites uh, to track the performance of our Google Ads um, uh, campaign. And I didn't have a solution in order to, I had a virtual number, but I didn't have a solution in order to display in Google Ads. And that was the first condition. And from there, it still grew up with more condition and more option. Uh, let's keep reviewing the uh, condition. I see the questions. I, I will answer promptly. Um, Dynamic link, it's basically adding a query string at the end of the URL. It's pretty much similar to the Google Ads. Um, you can set time-related uh, conditions, like uh, to show content from a um, certain uh, date and time, or until a certain date and time, or to schedule content. You simply click one of the days and uh, pick the hours. And uh, you can use this condition, for example, um, to show when, when, your, uh, uh, when your business is open, you can say, we're open, call now. You can call, uh, use multiple conditions, use it with the device uh, condition, and only on mobile say, we're open, call now, or we're closing in 30 minutes, call now. And when the business is closed, you can say, uh, we're closed, we're sleeping, uh, would you like us to, uh, to call you tomorrow? Please leave details and to show a form. Okay, geolocation, there were a lot of questions about it at the, at the AppSumo page. Um, I didn't mention it before, but uh, when you purchase IFSO on AppSumo or on the IFSO website, uh, you don't have a limit um, to use the conditions. You can use them as many uh, times as you want. We will not limit you. The only condition that is limited with number of sessions is uh, the geolocation uh, condition. That's because we compare uh, the user's IP with a uh, third party uh, database, uh, and then we show the content. So the geolocation condition is limited in uh, sessions. It's very simple to use. You simply select geolocation, you choose is or is not, and then you, uh, you, you select the country, city, continent, state, or time zone. For example, you can start typing United States. And you can uh, 
add another country, Ukraine, and show this content. If not, you can add another version and so on. The pages visited condition uh, allows you to show content if a user previously visited a page on your website. For example, uh, in our website, users need to sign up for a free trial. If they signed up for a free trial, they get to a thank you page to say, okay, thank you for signing up. Now we can change the call to action and not to push them to sign up for a free trial again, uh, to say, pick a plan or uh, to show advanced features that maybe they can for some reason, but we can show them uh, other options that they can use uh, if so and uh, improve their, the chances that will, they will eventually buy. Okay, Martin asks if there are so many possibilities, do you have a video and text documentation? Yes, we have a text documentation on the website. And we have some videos and uh, some of our, of our uh, partners uh, made some uh, videos in the last week or two. They show how to use it so with uh, Beaver Builder, with Elementor, and, uh, and we'll add more, more videos. But, but the most complicated conditions, the Google Ads, the recurrence, the, the complicated uh, things we already have uh, videos for and we have, uh, we have everything written in the website in a pretty clear uh, way. Clearer than I speak, for sure. Okay, cookie and IP, UTMs. A lot of people uh, already use UTMs uh, in order to track their uh, marketing. So we added uh, this condition. If a UTM campaign um, contains or is, or UTM source is, um, and the string that you choose, you can show specific content. That's what I showed you in the AppSumo example, what we did on our uh, website, sorry. Okay, let me show you, um, does it so work with uh, Divi? Yes, if so works with every page builder. Uh, we have a widget for Elementor that makes it a little bit more convenient to set the condition and we have something for Gutenberg and we'll add something for uh, a module for DV uh, and then we'll add modules and widgets for other, uh, other page builders. But yes, now uh, you can certainly use it. So with all the page builder, all you have to do is to set your uh, condition and then to paste this short code in a text field or called code field or uh, in some, uh, some page builders, even in the, in the title field. Um, and then you can do everything. I will actually, I will show you an example of how to set with Elementor and with Divi, you can uh, save templates. Uh, you can create templates in Elementor and Divi, save them and then use them, use their short code inside if so. And so you actually design your content in Elementor and Divi, but you use it inside it. So I will show it uh, to you in a moment. Uh, I, I just want to mention that uh, uh, except for the short code option, you, already, you also have a, an option to uh, apply the trigger using a PHP code. So uh, you can use it so directly in your page templates if you are developers or uh, depending on how your site is built sometimes uh, you can't access your header uh, or footer in order to uh, to add content. So uh, we have this uh, option. It makes it so very flexible. Uh, yeah. Does it so work with uh, Thrive Architect 2? Uh, I'm lining the possibilities. Thank you. Yes, also uh, Thrive Architect. Uh, if I'm already talking about page builder, so we have the settings of the, the, um, of the plugin here. And the most common issue we have with page builder is that sometimes the short code we have uh, is not rendered. So all you need to do is to go to the ISO settings and check or uncheck the uh, apply the content filter. You can see it here in the settings and it solves 99% of the problems. If you still have problem, just contact our support. We will uh, probably find the solution. It's probably something uh, in conflict with another plugin or with your team. Usually it works and there, there's no problem.
Okay, before I answer more questions, I want to show you a few more advanced options. Uh, the first one is the recurrence. The recurrence allows me to choose what a user will see when he returns to the uh, site for the uh, for his second visit. Let's say uh, I use the A-B testing condition or the Google Ads condition, and a user already seen a certain version. I want him to see the same version when he returns to the site, even if he didn't return from Google Ad or from, uh, from Facebook Ad. You can, uh, for example, you can set a Facebook, Facebook Ad campaign, sorry, and the uh, Facebook Ad campaign you it, it works uh, pretty much like the google ad you choose a query let's say female female and you target your ad uh, to women to women only so when a visitor comes to your site through this ad you know it's a she she's a woman but when she come back to your site sometimes it won't be from facebook she will close the browser she will come back again if you set the recurrence to always we add a cookie at the browser, and when the visitor returns to the to the to the page, they'll see exactly the same content as they've seen before. Another cool option we call it groups or audiences is uh, to add a user to a group when one of the dynamic content is displayed. Let's uh, talk about the Facebook ad example again. Uh, I know that the, the user is a woman because she came from a specific ad. I also can edit, I need to create the, the groups. Let's see how we do it. Just we simply go to groups and we call it women. Create a new group. Now I have a group of, of women. I refresh the triggers page. Now, when I'll set a Facebook ads condition, I can add the visitors to a group when they see this uh, content. And then in some other places on my website, I can add another trigger with a groups condition and say, if a user is part of the women group, I want to show him this content. So the user arrives for, to your landing page through Facebook, then it, it will go to another page on your website and you can add another trigger with a groups condition and still know it's a, women, it's a woman and you can uh, show content accordingly. Yes, I think it is very easy to do. Debbie, I answer your question. I think it is very easy to do for a non- uh, Nantehi like yeah, you. Um, and of course, if you have a problem, just contact us. We will be happy to, to help. So we talked about the recurrence op option. We talked about the groups option. Um, another option we have is here is the testing mode when I click here. So I actually force this version to be displayed. Let's say you set a geolocation condition and you want to show content to users in Egypt but you're not located in Egypt and you still want to see how the content looks. So you can uh, click the testing mode. You need to hit update. And then if so, we'll show this content. It's very convenient even if sometimes on your client's website or on your website, you want to keep certain versions of content, maybe for the holidays uh, or for any other reason, you have a notice that you don't want to show now, you can edit with uh, ISCO and then just, uh, 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 click the testing mode on another version or to it pause and uh, the version will not be displayed. Okay, uh, I didn't say it before, but uh, if so allows you to add or replace content. So you don't, if you want, you can leave one of the versions blank. The default version is blank. So now in this case, if so will not show anything, your website will be exactly the same as it is, but only if a condition is met, um, will add the content to your website. So it's very convenient. You don't need to change, to actually change anything on your website. You can only add sometimes notices or a call to action and you'll see a huge improvement in conversion rate. 
Would it be possible to target specific device type Android iPhone etc in a future update? Um, yeah, I guess we can add uh, this condition pretty easily. Um, you can write all the support we have. We don't want to add too many conditions here to the main plugin. So if you have specific uh, questions or if you need a specific solution, you can talk, contact us and we'll, um, if it's something that is simple to do, we'll uh, develop an extension. We already have an extension that when you uh, install it uh, along with the core uh, if so plugin, it adds conditions to your, um, to your website only. So yes, you can contact us. I, I need to consult with the dev team to see if it's uh, not too complicated. I believe it's not. Uh, just write us an email. Um, okay, what effect on page load time? The effect is, uh, is minimal. Uh, of course, everything you add to your website affects the page load time. Uh, but because if so is a part of your website, it's not uh, adding a third server here like uh, other solutions. We don't add another call to another server. Everything works uh, on your database, on your website. So uh, it's, it's minimal. Every website is different. If your website is built uh, poorly or if the server is uh, not too good, it might uh, have an effect. Uh, we, we don't hear a lot of, uh, of uh, complaints. We merely hear uh, complaint, complaints. And what you can do is sign up for a free trial on our website. You don't even need to purchase. You can set, uh, you, can, you can just enter your email here and create a condition you saw. It's very simple. You can do it in one minute or two minutes to edit to a page and to see how it acts, acts uh, how it works on your website and if there is any problem. Uh, one thing that is important with the page load is that you can't use dynamic content together with, uh, with page caching. Page caching is actually uh, showing the visitor a snapshot of your website. It's like a style, instead of rendering the page every time again, take the PHP and the HTML and the CSS and build your, your, your page uh, when the user browses uh, the page, I'll just take a snapshot and show it to him. So if you show a snapshot, of course, you can set, uh, you can show dynamic content. So you have to exclu exclude the page from the page caching. Um, all caching plugins can do it. Uh, all servers, if you have a caching as part of your server, you can contact your, uh, your hosting company and they can also exclude specific pages and specific cookies from the cache. Uh, I'll show you our roadmap uh, very soon um, in, a, in a few uh, minutes. Uh, we do have a, a potential solution for you for this. Uh, we're gonna add a JavaScript solution that will uh, allow you to load the, the page caching, the, the, the page from the caching. And then after the page loads, will add the dynamic content. So the user experience might be a little bit uh, different, um, but it's supposed to be pretty smooth and to work uh, pretty good. Uh, it's supposed to be ready during May, it's very soon. And they were very excited about this, uh, this feature. Can you pre-populate, -popul uh, Richard, this is yours. Can you pre-populate or autofill a form based on the condition that, that depends on your uh, on your form. Some forms uh, allow um, short code, so I, I, I haven't showed you the the DKI, the dynamic keyword insertion option. But basically, yes, you can use it in some of the forms. Contact form seven, for example, has an extension that allows you to use short codes, and I guess that the other contact form uh, plugins can do it also. Uh, let me show you the dynamic keyword insertion. Uh, option and to show you how to search for information on our website you can go to support and you have a search box here I'll just click DKI and I have the results here okay you can use the search box it will help you a lot and we also have most of the features so all of the features here you can see all the conditions and you can see uh, some of the main features. So features dynamic keyword insertion. 
And that's another option we have, apart from the triggers, apart from the dynamic triggers, um, you can just use a shortcode on your website after you install ISO, and it will display um, it will display content accordingly. Uh, look, for example, if I want to show the user's uh, country, uh, say, hello, uh, Egypt, or free shipping to, you don't need free shipping to Egypt. So you can write free shipping to, and then place this shortcode. If so, the DKI type geo show country, you can go to our website, copy it from here and paste it on your website. So it can be either geolocation or Richard, regarding your question, you can use the, the, the query string uh, condition. Uh, you can say that if, uh, let's uh, add uh, to the URL a question here, a uh, user name equals Joseph. Okay, can you see the URL here? We just added this username equals if, so I can use this short code here, if so DKI type query string parameter, I'll choose the username. And then if so will automatically show Joseph instead of the short code. So if you have an email uh, campaign that can pass the query string, the user's name, uh, along with the URL to your website, you can uh, show the user his name or any other category uh, based information. Uh, you can use the same thing inside the context form uh, Richard. Okay, more question. Oliver. Um, is there a directory of extension you previously developed? Um, the extensions we developed, yes, we have a wish list extension uh, that can show content based on the user's label. You can click wish, wish list here on the search box and find it. And we don't have a one page with all the extensions, but uh, we will add one. Um, okay. I just want to show you one more option and that's it. The, uh, you have time for all the questions. Um, oh, no, sorry. Very important thing, the built-in analytics. <laughs> After you set up uh, conditions, uh, a triggers with conditions, you have here a built-in analytics. You don't need to do anything, and you'll see how many times, times each version was viewed. We see zeros here because uh, we don't count administrators' um, um, views. So because I'm uh, logged into the website, it, does, it, it didn't count me, but you can see here the views. And you also have a conversion option. Option You just need to click here, set up a conversion, a conversion to copy this shortcode, paste it in your thank you page. And if so, we'll, um, we'll mark, sorry, um, we'll mark a conversion at the last version that the user has seen. If it's a returning visitor condition, for example, a user entered for the first time, then entered for the second time, so a different version. So the conversion will be uh, allocated to the second uh, visit. It's very easy, very convenient. You don't need to do anything. Uh, don't need to paste the code uh, in your uh, in your head uh, file in your page template. It's very convenient. And if you want more information, it, it's very basic also. Um, if you want more information, you there is a way to think if so with uh, Google uh, Analytics using the Tag Manager. We have an explanation uh, about it on our website. Um, so we really lost it. Yeah, you can go to our uh, blog. And uh, track dynamic content with Google Analytics. We explain here step by step how to uh, create an event when a dynamic version is displayed and how to show to uh, segment your report accordingly if the uh, event occurs. Uh, so yeah, there was one more thing that I wanted to show you. It's the user selection form. 
Also, you can find it on our website, Features, User Selection. And uh, here you have an option to allow your visitor to choose the content, uh, your visitors to choose the content they will see. For example, here I can select the gender and look at the, uh, the header of this page. Okay, this is the default header. If I select a female and hit go, the page will load again and I will see a different, uh, different banner around the world, girls. If I select male, I see you the men. You can use it in a variety of ways. Uh, it can be uh, by gender, age, interest, uh, any other group uh, that you want to create, you simply create groups inside it. So, and then you, you choose which content to show. It can be a selection box. It can also be a radio button like here. And you can do it even without the, the go button. You will choose if you want to add the, the go button or not. For example, here I have a, a radio buttons without a go condition. Whenever I select the page loads again with the relevant content. It's a very powerful feature. Um, it can be used um, if you are using the geolocation condition. It's very important to say that the geolocation condition is not 100% accurate. Uh, it's not a problem with if, so it's a problem with the, the method of showing uh, IP based content. So you can uh, definitely use the geolocation condition and add the selection box that uh, will allow users to select their location uh, if it's not accurate or just use only the selection box and not use the geolocation condition. Um, okay, question. We have a couple requests um, to see something in Elementor. Um, oh, yes. Yeah. Okay. Let me show you uh, our new Elementor widget and how to save templates uh, using Elementor. The same thing can be uh, done using Divi and maybe in other page builders too. I'm not familiar with all the page builders, but uh, during June, uh, we're going to make a lot of um, um, widgets or modules or every page builder call it uh, in a different way uh, that will make it uh, very convenient to add content. Um, so here I have a page that was built with Elementor. This is the, the back side of it. Uh, and it's a, um, a website of one of, 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 of hotel. And I want to change this um, review according to the user's uh, browser language. The users will uh, have more trust if they see someone from, in some countries, someone from their own country. So the, their attention will be, um, it will direct their attention to see a recommendation in their own uh, language. So let's see how, how I set it up in Elementor. I already show you how to set it up in ISO. Uh, to how to set up the browser language condition. But here, this is the widget, uh, this is the, the recommendation recommendation section. Um, actually, let me add another one. I search for IFSO in the widget. Drag it uh, to Elementor. And then here, I need to select, uh, select the trigger. Okay, I call this trigger uh, reviews. You have two buttons here. You can go to view the trigger and then you'll see all the triggers versions. And you have a quick a button to quickly access the, uh, the trigger in order to edit here. So this is my trigger. I called it reviews. That's why you show here reviews. Um, and I used um, a ready template of Elementor to show the content. I will show you how to do it. If a user uh, speaks Spanish, or is Spanish is a part of his uh, browser language languages, uh, I want to show this template. And if not, I want to show this template. Um, OK. Uh, so let's go back to our uh, widget. I chose the trigger here. You can already see the analytics inside your page and which is great you don't need to access your trigger and you can preview versions this is the default version and this is version 8 you can see both of them in the preview it's, it's 
it's a huge improvement for uh, Elementor uh, uh, users. Um, let's see how I designed the content in Elementor. And again, you can do it with DV and other plugin. All I have to do is to uh, design the content however you want. You can change the style, the background, the image, and then right click the section or the widget and click Save as Template. Give it a name. Example, webinar. Save. And of course, um, sorry. And of course, you can duplicate it, change it a little bit. Okay. And also save this template. Let's call it webinar two. It's saved. Now, when I go to uh, template, save template. I see webinar two and example webinar, and they have a short code. All I need to do is to copy the short code from here and paste it inside uh, my dynamic version in IFSO. Okay, and so it didn't copy. That's it. Hit publish, and I show my trigger inside Elementor. Okay, it's very very simple. Um, the save template option and the short code are part of Elementor Pro, but there is a plugin that you can install and uh, have the same option uh, if you're on the free plan of Elementor. In DV also, it's not uh, it's not default, but they have on their website. I will uh, add the link, and they have an explanation of how you can add the short um, code to your function sphere, uh, function PHP file. And then you'll have this uh, option also. Will this work in Hebrew? Yes, of course. Uh, it's already right to left uh, ready, and you can you can set whatever content you want inside. Uh, can integrate heat maps along with returning visitor and show content in areas on the page that's frequented the most. Um, I guess you, you have to do it separately. You need to, uh, to check it with heat maps and then to set the content manually. We don't have an automatic integration that, uh, that does it, but it's a very interesting idea. Awesome. Sumalang, that was the last of our questions in the Q&A. If anybody else has a question, um, go ahead and leave those in the Q&A box. Um, I'll give it just a couple seconds because whenever I jump on here, a question always pops in. Uh, um, do you know anything about um, integrating the plugin into Thrive themes? It's exactly the same. You simply um, copy the short code from IFSO and paste it in a in a in a code uh, field or text field. Um, we already have. Uh, I know for sure that it works. We had some uh, support issues regarding something else or questions. Of people with uh, with Thrive and it worked. We have one user uh, that uh, has a problem now, but it's uh, specific to his website, and we will solve it uh, also. It's just that the content filter that I showed before uh, is not working there. But there shouldn't be a problem if there is contact or support, they will solve it. Awesome, love that. Thank you very much. And that is the end of our question. So I'm going to go ahead and come back on camera and wrap this up. All right, thank you so much Sumo Lings for joining us today. Uh, if you have any more questions about if so, you can always leave those on the deal page. But of course, we definitely want to uh, hear what it's like once you get set up. Um, oh, we do have one last question. And he said, oops, too late, but I'm gonna go ahead and, and let you answer it anyways. What is best practice using if so to dynamically change H1 page titles? Okay, so technically it's very simple. Usually WordPress uh, do not allow short codes in titles, but uh, we already added this option to our settings. So all you need to go to do is to go to our ISO settings and then um, check the uh, allow short codes in the titles and use the short code inside the title. But you need to be aware that uh, if you're concerned about SEO, changing the title might not be the best uh, idea. That depends on uh, which condition 
you, uh, you choose, because in some condition, uh, Google or any other search engine, in most condition, they will see the same content. So it's not a problem, but you need to, uh, to take it under consideration when you change the, the H1. Awesome. Thank you again. All right. And that will be the last of our questions. Um, thank you so much, Joseph, for going over all of that with us today. Um, and thank you, Sumolings, for joining us. You can get apps, um, you can get if so right now on appsumo.com slash if dash so. Uh, it is available right now starting at just $49. Uh, again, leave any questions that you have on the deal page and we would like to know how it is working for you. There are so many possibilities with this plugin. So we definitely want to hear which ones you are taking advantage of. All right. Thank you so much. Everybody have a good one. Thanks, Joseph. Bye-bye. Thank you.